Mods allow you to experience games in a whole new way. They allow you to interact with the world in a way which wasn't previously possible and do crazy things like, uh, well, whatever this is. Hello, and welcome to this tutorial which will teach you how to create your first mod in Red Dead Redemption 2 using C Sharp. We'll be going over the prerequisites, how to install the requirements, how to set up your development environment, and how to write a simple mod. The mod we're going to be writing today is a mod I've written before, which is the Thunderhawk mod. It's a simple mod which allows you to summon rain and throw tomahawks which will smite your target upon impact. First, we must install Alexander Blade script hook. You can find the link in the description below. To install it, just go to Alexander Blade's website, download the zip file, and unpack it into your Red Dead Redemption 2 game folder, which by default should be in your program files directory. Now we must install SaltyQ script hook.net wrapper mod. This allows you to run .NET libraries as mods in Red Dead Redemption 2. You can download the mod from Nexus Mods and then unpack the files in the Red Dead Redemption 2 game folder, just like we did with Alexander Blade's script hook. If you do not yet have Visual Studio, I left the download link in the description below. After installing all the mod prerequisites, we must now open up Visual Studio. First, create your project. Make sure the project is a class library for .NET Framework because the .NET standard class library won't work. Click Next and then Target .NET version 4.6. This is the highest version supported by scripthook.net. Now, once you've created your project, open up your references and add a new reference. The reference we want to add is going to be scripthook.net. Select the Browse option, locate scripthook.net DLL file, which is in your games folder, and choose that file. And then press OK. Now go into Properties of the project, head over to Build Events, and in the Post Build Event, set the command X copy with the following parameters. This command will copy the binaries over to the scripts folder in your game directory, so you don't need to manually move the binaries every time. Make sure it points to where your game directory exists. Now rename the original class something which makes sense. You could choose your mod name, but I prefer to name my main class as Client. Have the main class extend script, import the reference for script, and then add a constructor. In this constructor, we're going to set up a tick handler. A tick handler is a function which is called in sync with the game. Now set the interval to 1. This tells script to execute your tick functions in sync with the game frame rate. Let's now create the tick handler function. The tick handler function requires two parameters, an object and event args. These parameters are never used, but they're still required. Let's now check the native database for functions we could use to accomplish what we want. We're going to use this function here to check the last weapon impact position. When we check the parameters of this function, we can see it requires a pad handle and then a vector3. The vector3 has an asterisk by its name, which indicates that it's a pointer. Let's head on back to Visual Studio. Now in the tick function, we're going to check the last weapon impact position. Normally this function only returns the value of the weapon impact for a few frames. We will pass the player pad as the first argument, and now we require a vector3. However, this is a pointer. A pointer just tells the program to store the value in this object so we can use it elsewhere. We can use the output argument to retrieve the vector3 stored at this pointer. Now let's get the result of the output argument and store it into a vector3. Let's debug this value and see if it's the function that we want to use. Let's pass the vector3 value to a text element, specify the x and y coordinates we would like to display it on the screen, and then draw the text element each frame. This allows us to quickly see if this is the type of value we want to use. Now let's build the solution. Our post build event will copy over the binaries over to the scripts directory, so all we have to do is launch the game. Now that we have the game launched, I'm going to use DevTools to spawn in the weapons we want. If you'd like to get DevTools, which is a simple mod menu I made which helps ease the development process by providing a suite of utilities such as noclip and entity debugging, I've included a download link below. And let's try throwing the tomahawk to see what values we get. The values returned in the debug text looks a bit wonky, but if we slow it down, we can see that for a few frames, it's exactly the value we want. With this information, let's go back to Visual Studio and check if the vector is within a 200 meter radius of us. Now if it's within range of us, let's strike lightning at the coordinates that the function returns. For this we're going to use this native, which was originally discovered by Smalo. Let's pass the x, y, and z coordinates as the parameters. Let's also store it into a field so we can keep track of the position so we don't strike in the same position more than once. Let's now add a condition to check if the weapon impact coordinates aren't the same position as last time, and then rebuild the project. Let's go back into the game and press insert to reload the scripts. Now when we throw our weapon, lightning strikes where it impacts. Fire should start where it lands, and it will also do immense damage to other entities as well. We made great progress so far, but we're not done just yet. We need to check if the weapon the player has equipped is the weapon we want them to have equipped. If we don't, we can see that the code will cause any gunfire to smite the player's target. So heading back to Visual Studio, let's add a condition before the weapon impact code, which will check the current player weapon. 
First, we need to get the current player weapon. Let's create a new function which returns a weapon hash. Let's create another output argument and call the native get current pet weapon. Let's pass the player pet, the output argument, 0, 0, and then 1. Let's get the result from the output argument and return it as a hash. And let's go back to the tick handler and add a condition. If the current player weapon isn't equivalent to the tomahawk, let's return so we don't execute any code after this condition. Now after building the solution, let's head back into the game and restart our scripts. We can see that normal gunshots won't cause lightning to strike and only the tomahawks do. With that, we've finished our mod. Thank you for watching this tutorial. This video wouldn't have been possible without my supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel and the content I create, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Patrons get early access to videos, exclusive mods, and resources to help their development endeavors. If you have any issues, make sure to leave a comment below or join our Discord, which has an awesome community of over 600 members ready to help anyone, even beginners. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.